Hi there, I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting, a podcast, episode seven. Today, I want to celebrate a small but personally significant um, milestone for this particular channel, and um, that is that um, Great Scott Knitting has reached 100 plus subscribers so great thank you so much for uh, subscribing to this channel and for tuning in on a regular basis to see what i'm talking about in terms of fiber Um, i hope you have found uh, this channel to be entertaining uh, interesting and maybe even informative So for those of you who are returning viewers, thank you for sticking with me and uh, watching me as I continue on this journey. For those of you who are new, I want to welcome you. Uh, I'm glad you're here and I hope you find your time well spent here. I'm coming to you from Wichita, Kansas, where today it is uh, a sunny 92 degrees and this evening it's going to dip down into the mid 60s so it is starting to get cooler which thank god um so here's a big reminder winter is coming so it's time to get our knitting done speaking of getting our knitting done uh, it's been a little over two weeks since i last recorded a podcast um so i do have several things off the needles that i want to share with you the first item is this shawl this is a um this shawl pattern Ooh, i had it backwards this shawl pattern i'm calling right now variations on a theme this is an experimental shawl pattern that i am working on and considering publishing in the near future. Uh, It is based on the Quaker Ridge Islet pattern that I just published in Ravelry, uh, the Quaker Ridge Islet shawl. Um, But this one is a little bit different in that it is knit on the bias in a triangular shawl. And um, it also has that eyelet border with the pico bind off one of the things that i did a little bit differently on this shawl is in ter- is that i added that pico bind off on the finished edge by picking up uh, stitches and adding that in what i'm strongly considering doing is before i publish it trying a version of it where i take this eyelet border and when I pick up stitches on this finished edge, adding in that eyelet border before I do the pico bind off. The yarn that I used for this test pattern is the uh, Karen Cakes uh, yarn, which is a uh, 80% acrylic, 20% wool uh, yarn cake. And the colorway is called uh, cake pop, which it does have this these little pops of the blue and the green with these uh, different tonal grays. The next item that I completed is a another rendition of the Quaker Ridge eyelet shawl. I'm calling this one my Royal Court Quaker Ridge Eyelet Shawl because um, this is knit in the Knitology Worsted Merino um, colorways of Empire and Royal Court. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool in worsted weight. And um, this is from Knit Crate. So this is one of my Knit Crate subscription yarns. The way these two yarns are, the the, the way these two colorways are is that they're much more complementary. And as I come a little closer, you can sort of see that. They 
there's not a lot of contrast, so they it kind of blends together a bit. But um, you can s definitely see from the royal court you have the purples and the grays with the teal color, and then of course with the empire colorway you have those tonal blues. Now I did kind of play with the pattern as I knit it this time, um, instead of using the suggested uh, number ten knitting needle I used it number nine to give it a little denser um, gauge it's still very open and still very drapey but one of the consequences of that is I had once I reached the end of the pattern I had some some additional yarn so I added an additional repeat which meant that uh, my border had to change a little bit um, I still have that eyelet border, but it's a single eyelet as opposed to a double eyelet border. Um, I really, uh, this is a very quick knit, um, but it makes, so it makes a very quick present if you need to uh, get something done quickly for someone. Um, but it it is lovely. You can tell that it would be lovely as a solid color. Um, it also works really well with complementary or contrasting colorways. Um, I did do a couple of hats over the past couple weeks. The first hat is the Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. Um, I wanted to test out or play with one of the yarns that I recently dyed because I was very, very curious as to what it would look like knit up. And um, so this is the uh, skein of yarn that I dyed with that was primarily blacks and, and red with a little bit of that gold color um, playing off in the middle of it. And um, the way that knit up was very striped, which was not surprising. But what surprised me about this skein of yarn is that little pop of gold that I had in the color work that I did, or in the dyeing that I did, turned into these little pops of, you know, like strong pops of gold throughout the piece of work. And another thing that, that had occurred when I was dying was the black broke into some green. And I'm really surprised by the amount of green that turned out into this particular colorway as it knit up. It's not, it wasn't as noticeable in the skein uh, as it was as I knit it, which really changed how I saw this particular skein of yarn. Um, I saw it as a very vibrant, um, energetic color. And then when I knit it up, it turned into this very sort of autumnal fall colorway with, you know, deep, the, the black and the red playing off with each other um, really turned it much more into a rusty color um, with the oranges and the greens. Um, so just it was surprising for me um, how how much of a fall feel this particular colorway took on once I knit it up. I really enjoyed the pattern. It's extremely well written, very simple. Um, and oddly enough, it was a relatively quick knit for me, which being a fingering weight um hat kind of that kind of surprised me at how quickly i was able to get it done I, I think it only took me about seven days of work to to actually knit up this hat and um yeah i, I just really enjoyed the process of it and it uh I, I i enjoyed doing that monotonous circular stockinette knitting um, it did make me put me into a hat mood, so I did cast on another hat. Um, this hat is called That Simple Hat, and it's the pattern is by Elizabeth Canaday. This is a bulky weight hat. 
that I knit in Lion Brand Hometown USA with the colorway of Salem Creek. This colorway is primarily black, white, and gray, but in the middle of it, there was this stripe of black, white, and salmon, which uh, creates this really surprising uh, and pleasing um, marled stripe in the middle. Now, uh, the yarn is, of course, all twisted together, but it, it gives it that, that marled look to the hat. The pattern calls for using a number 11 on the band and a number US 13 on the body, but I don't have a US 13 circular needle, so um, it's all knit up in number 11, which made it a bit denser, but um, I think it's going to be an extremely warm hat for the winter. Um, I'm very pleased at how it turned out, so it's quite lovely. Um, this yarn is 100% acrylic, so it's easily washable. And, oh, that's it for my finished objects for knitting. I did do, um, a couple of weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago, I did some dyeing experiments. And so I have those finished objects to share with you. Um, so I dyed up a couple of skeins of Dyer Supplier Superwash Fingering Singles. This is a single ply yarn that is 100% superwash merino wool from Dyer Supplier. I used Kool-Aid and food color to dye these skeins of yarn. And the technique that I used was um, to dye them in canning jars with the food color or Kool-Aid um, dispersed throughout the jar in different ways. Um, I, I think these turned out really nicely uh, and I'm really looking forward to knitting a couple of things up with these. They are definitely individual skeins of yarn. Um, they would not, I don't think they would pair up very well, but um, I don't know, maybe a couple more sock hats. I don't know. Or, okay, um, here's where I'm going to talk about works in progress, which right now I don't have any works in progress, except I've actually cast on a sock. I had some left over um, of the colorway that I used for the sock head slouch hat. And because I enjoyed that process so much, it made me think, oh, well, you know, maybe I do want to try out knitting some socks again. So here we go. I have the start of a toe up sock. The sock pattern that I am making use of is called the standard sock by Carly Perrins. And so it is a basic toe up sock with the uh, Judy's Magic cast on. And um, it has a, a basic heel flap and gusset heel. Now, naturally, okay, it, you can tell I don't have a lot of this left, so I'm not going to be actually be able to have a pair of socks. But this will allow me to test out um, sizing and techniques that I like or dislike. Now, one of the things that I often had that had basically turned me off of knitting socks is laddering that can sometimes happen on the edges. And um, I would have, I, I have knit or played around with knitting socks on double pointed needles, um, but never with fingering weight or sock yarn. I've always used either worsted or sometimes a DK. Um, this is the first time I've ever cast on using an actual sock type yarn. And I am enjoying it. Yeah. So I can see this happening. Um, I only have the one pair. Well, no, actually, I do have two 
um, needle, two sets of needles, uh, circular needles um, that are sized for knitting socks. Uh, this is a US two and a half. And as you can tell, I'm using Magic Loop um, because I do not have size two and a half circular or uh, double pointed needles. So it's kind of forcing me into doing uh, Magic Loop. I have often had troubles with the edges doing laddering, and that doesn't seem to be much of an issue um, as I'm knitting these. So um, when I get to the heel, um, I'm interested to see, to see if I like the heel flap and gusset basic heel. Um, I, I know that um, several folks out there that I watch on YouTube land like uh, the Fish Lips Kiss which I'm kind of interested in what that might look like. So I'm knitting a sock. It is a test sock. It is to see what fits my foot and what I like to do. So it's not actually going to be a pair of socks, but there is definitely a pair of socks in my future. All right, acquisitions. I have um, two sets of acquisitions. One is a set of patterns. Um, Anthony Casalena on Ravelry had a big birthday sale this past couple of weeks um, where his patterns were on sale, which I think were 45% off. So I bought like four patterns that I had been very, very interested in. Um, I bought the Fast Lane shawl pattern, which is a fingering weight two color shawl using um, slip stitch or mosaic knitting uh, techniques. Um, I bought Trey Multi, which is a three color fingering weight shawl, which does a lot of short row knitting which is one of those, uh, I really enjoy short row knitting. Um, I purchased Castra, which is a one color fingering weight, um, short row technique shawl. And I purchased Venti, which is a two color fingering weight, short row striping shawl. Um, so I really am, uh, I, I look forward to, to knitting up some of these shawls. Um, and I really like uh, his patterns. I've looked at, uh, uh, been eyeing a lot of his patterns uh, over the past few months. And with this sale, I was like, eh, there's no reason not to. So thank you, Anthony Casalana, for having a birthday, for having a wonderful sale, and for creating these lovely, lovely patterns. I can't wait to cast them on. Um, my neighbor um, was gracious enough to gift me some additional yarn. Um, recently, uh, dog sat for her when she was out of town, so she brought me some yarn that she picked up when she thought of me in the store. And um, her tastes are not necessarily my tastes, but the hey, I love yarn. I don't care where it comes from. So these are three single skeins of yarn, which will probably turn into hats or maybe even some scarves. Uh, the first one is Yarn B Stripe It, which is a worsted weight yarn, 100 grams, uh, 100, 196 yards worth of 78% acrylic, 22% wool. And this was in the colorway of red and white, as you can tell. Um, yeah, so one of the things I could do with this is because there is that 22% wool in it, I could do a little over dyeing on this. Might do that. If only to, to be a little experimental. Um, the second one is Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek Chunky. As you can tell, it is a bright 
white yarn. This is 100% acrylic. Um, it is a bulky weight yarn, 142 grams, equaling to about 218 yards. Um, so I'll come up with something to do with this. I am sure it will turn into a hat or possibly get mixed in with um, another yarn to create um, you know, some kind of a, an interesting uh, uh, scarf pattern. The last skein of yarn she got me was Yarn B Alpaca Twist. Again, another very, very bright white yarn. It even blows out on the camera. You really can't even, it's so white. Um, it is a worsted weight yarn, 100 grams equaling about 175 yards. It is 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca, which because there's that protein fiber in there, I may have to play around with doing some over dye on this. Now, again, it will be a very subtle color because of the uh, strong um, uh, acrylic base, but the animal fiber in there will pick up some color. So I think this one is ripe for a little bit of over dyeing as well. So that will be uh, some fun. Casting on, I am, because I purchased those Anthony Casalena shawl patterns, I am interested in casting one on. And um, the one I think I'm going to go for is the shawl pattern Castra. And I am vacillating between, and it's, I, I could use some fingering weight yarn, but... I'm actually thinking of either, I'm going to go to a sport weight yarn, because I have some sport weight yarn. Um, I'm considering either the um, Audine Wool's Interlock in this colorway of Haze. This is a 34% um, cotton, 35% linen, 19% lyocell and 11% nylon uh, yarn, 100 grams equaling about 350 yards. It is this lovely um, tonal violet um, that I think would work up really nicely for this particular shawl pattern. This or potentially this. This is Audine Wool's um, Shine Sport, which is an 80% um, 80 superwash merino, 20% tensile sport weight yarn, um, about 350 yards per 100 grams. Um, the colorway is called Sky, which is um, this speckled blue and violet yarn. And I think this also would look really interesting in um, on this particular pattern. So um, I'll probably have to just toss a coin and make a choice on one of those as to which one I want to use to cast on this particular shawl. Um, oh, actually, there was another couple of skeins that I recently got. Um, I did talk about these in my Knit Crate unboxing uh, video. If you didn't see that, um, knit, my Knit Crate for July came in early August. This, these two skeins are a deep tonal violet or deep tonal purple yarn. It is um, Uru yarn by Knit Crate. And this is Cotton Basic. It is a 100% organic Pima cotton in DK weight. Uh, each 100 gram skein is approximately 266 yards. So there is um, a shawl pattern that came with this particular Knit Crate um, subscription month that... Um, 
looks really interesting. They very seldom have shawl patterns, so um, I really feel like I should knit up this shawl pattern. It's a nice one. It's pretty. It looks relatively uh, relatively simple. Um, so that's probably what those will go to is the shawl pattern that they were meant to be on. I very seldom do that. So um, lots and lots of fiber. So lots of things I've, I've been up to the past couple of weeks. Um, what else have I been up to? Um, well, let's see. Over the past couple of weeks since I last recorded, um, those of you who may have, have seen my very first uh, episode may remember that we, uh, my husband and I were fostering my nephew. Uh, he was uh, living with us and going to school uh, with us. He had been having some issues uh, with his mother and his mother uh, being a single mother of three other gir little girls and um, he was a bit of a handful for her. So uh, he spent about a year and a half living with us. Um, just this past couple of weeks, he and his mother decided that he would attend school back in Missouri where she lives and um, so he has gone home. Um, I have very mixed feelings about that, um, especially in this uh, period where uh, COVID is still a huge issue. And if you followed anything about things going on in Missouri, uh, the Missouri government, uh, state government, doesn't take it quite as seriously as I think they should. And um, to my knowledge, he will be doing in-person school uh, where here he would have been doing distance learning. So I think that played a role in a little bit of the decision to for of him going home. So um, I'm wish I'm hoping the very best for him as he uh, starts back into school in uh, back in Missouri with, back with his parents. Um, so um, that was a little bit stressful and a little bit. Um, a little bit challenging, but um, uh, I kind of miss him. Uh, it, it's a, it's very different not having a teenager in the house. <laughs> um, other than that, um, with him being gone, um, there's a lot more time for me to play on the Xbox. So I've sort of revisited a few of the games that that I enjoy playing. Um, uh, primarily, Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, there have been some updates to it since I really last played it, so I've uh, gone back in and started playing a little bit of Jedi Fallen Order, um, and also um, have been uh, exploring and playing a little bit of Elder Scrolls Online. Um, hadn't really played played Elder Scrolls the online version. I played Morrowind. I played Skyrim. I played. Um, all many of the other versions. Uh, so this is the first time going through the Elder Scrolls Online. So far, I'm enjoying it. I just don't have as much time to play video games as I used to. Um, another thing I've been doing a lot of is uh, staying caught up with the various... Um, knitting blogs that are out on YouTube. Um, just to kind of recap some of my favorite knitting blogs, and if you haven't checked these guys out, I, I highly encourage you to um, go check out at least one episode of any one of these uh, knitting blogs. I will also post this list of my favorite knitting blogs in the show notes so you can uh, with a link so that you can go check these guys out as well. Um, these are the ones that I never miss. Uh, Chemnitz Tutorials. Uh, Rebecca Brown, based in Newton, Massachusetts, is a great teacher for dyeing fiber. Um, if you are at all interested in playing around with, with dyeing fiber in your own home, um, 
she makes it very accessible, very um, easy to understand. And um, all you'd have to do is go buy either some uh, food coloring or some Kool-Aid packets, some vinegar and some wool and off you can go. Um, Sweet Tea No Shade with Scott and John based in Minneapolis. They are extremely entertaining um, and also very uh, informative and inspiring. Uh, Needles at the Ready. I never miss these guys. Uh, Ray and Kevin, they are a lot of fun to watch and they um, are also very inspiring. I have been inspired to knit hats and, and now, of course, uh, both, uh, you know, Scott and John and Ray and Kevin have gotten me interested in knitting socks, which, as you can tell, I've started doing. Um, I never miss an episode of Smells Like Yarn with Ross, uh, based in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, love watching his uh, uh, podcast, you know, his fiber journey. Um, I have knit his... Uh, his Ross hat several times. And it's, again, it's a great knit to, to do over and over because it's, it's easy to remember and it always looks good at the end. And um, he's just a lot of fun to watch because uh, he has specific things he enjoys and, and, you know, he doesn't, doesn't apologize for not enjoying other types of, of knitting. Um, and I like that about him because I feel the same way. Um, Rusty Knits, who is a relatively new podcast out there with Rusty in Hampton. They're based in Dallas, Texas. Um, very enjoyable. Rusty is also a uh, fiber artist. He does visual arts using fiber. Um, his work is really very, very interesting. A lot of, uh, so I, you know, check these guys out. Uh, they've got a really unique podcast. Uh, Dramatic Knits um, with Steve and Clinton or Dramatic Knits. Um, uh, great podcast. Um, features the Leading Men Fiber Arts uh, Indie Dyer um, because, you know, uh, Dramatic Knits is Leading Men Fiber Arts or half of the Leading Men Fiber Arts. So um, great podcast, very inspiring. Um, Fiber Hustle with Aaron and Chip based in Seattle. Um, hysterical couple of guys, lots of fun. Uh, definitely check those guys out. Um, one is a knitter crocheter, the other is a um, quilter and sewer and uh, their work is amazing and um, their banter is just cannot be missed. Uh, a couple of newer podcasts that I've been watching are um, Drowning in Yarn with Caleb. He's based in Chicago. Um, really like, um, have been re he's only had a couple of uh, like three or four episodes. I've really enjoyed um, his work and um, then there's a couple, uh, couple of folks that have the podcast of Not Your Average Knitting Podcast with Max and Abby. They're based in Alberta, Cal or, uh, Calgary, Alberta. A um, lot of fun. They're both um, musicians, and so this they kind of ha have wormed their way into my heart because I. Um, um, was uh, have my degree in music education. They are both musicians, and so, yeah, um, automatically I felt a connection with these guys. Um, so do check those guys out. Um, I've also been watching the Knit Crate YouTube channel because they have, um, in addition to the reveals that they do for their knit crates on a regular basis, they also have some various other um, knitting or, or, or uh, fiber content on their channel. And one of their fiber contents is called Dive Into Dying, which features Rebecca Brown from Ken Knits Tutorials. 
teaching about dying on their channel. And it is primarily, um, partially an advertisement for their sister company, Knit Crate's sister company, Dyer Supplier, which is the company I have started using quite a bit for getting my um, blank yarn from. Uh, so check them out um, if you're interested in dyeing as well. They also have a lot of tutorials on around knitting and crochet, so those are, are, will, are worth taking a look at as well. So keeping up with all of those um, knitting blogs uh, keeps me pretty busy in my downtime. Um, so usually about this point is when I start talking about Torah and going into Devar Torah. For right now, I'm going to suspend my Devar Torah and uh, primarily because it doesn't really deal a lot with fiber or fiber related or even craft related items. So what I'm thinking of doing instead is um, substituting some various fiber or knitting related things that I have learned or find interesting. I've been wanting to learn more about yarn and uh, the yarn fibers and how they act and, and, and those types of things because I think learning more about yarn itself is going to help me as a dyer because I'm really feeling a desire to, to do more dyeing. Um, so probably not for this podcast, but upcoming podcasts, I'm going to start slipping in more of that part of my journey. Um, one of the things I'm going to do to start that is I'm going to start reading through this, which is the Knitter's, uh, Knitter's Book of Yarn, The Ultimate Guide to Choosing, Using, and Enjoying Yarn by Clara Parks. As I read through this, what I'll do is I'll share some of the insights, things I find interesting, things I'm learning um, with you on this channel. Um, like, for example, I've done, you know, read just sort of the introductory information. Uh, did you know that there were basically only four categories of yarn? I mean, I, I really thought it was just uh, things I could afford and things I couldn't, and those were just the two sections of yarn. Um, there are protein fibers, which are, your, of course, your wool, uh, or just hairs that grow on animals. Um, cellulose fibers, which is basically your... your plant fibers like cotton or linen. Um, then there's cellulosic fibers, which I'd never heard of. And that's basically plants that have been liquefied and extruded into a fiber. Um, that would be things like rayon and tensile. And then of course, then there's your synthetic fibers, which are entirely man-made fibers like polyester, nylon, and acrylic. Um, so this book will go through the characteristics of each of those different fiber types, how the yarn is made and spun, um, the nature of the different plies that you might have from single ply into your multi-plied yarns. Um, you know, hey, it's back to school time. Maybe it's time for me to start learning some new stuff as well. So as I learn things from this book, I'll share them with you all on this podcast. Ah, so we've come down to the end uh, of this particular podcast. Um, be sure to check out the other videos that I have on this channel. Uh, right now, primarily, those are uh, my yarn dyeing and then, of course, the previous podcasts as well. Um, give me a shout out in the com comments also. Let me know what you've enjoyed. Um, or maybe things that you don't like about this channel. Not that I'm going to change them, but you know, it's, um, it's nice to know. Um, what do you want to see more of, or what do you want to see less of? And um, you know, what what are some of the, uh, some of your favorite types of things to knit? Some of your favorite yarns to knit with? Um, you know, what's your favorite bread re recipe? Uh, mine is the Amish white bread. Uh, I love knitting or, or, or baking that particular bread. Yeah, I, I, I love dabbling in the kitchen as well. Uh, I love cooking and 
bed break, uh, bread baking and baking cookies and all that. Yeah, I do that too. Um, but you'll probably not see those things show up in this particular podcast. You know, maybe I'll do a little baking podcast later. Uh, you can find me in social media on Facebook. I have a Facebook page for Great Scott Knitting, and that's at uh, facebook.com slash Great Scott Knitting. On Instagram, I am Great Scott Knitting, and on Ravelry, I am Great Scott KCMO. Thank you for tuning in, for showing up, for watching. Um, again, to my 100 subscribers, wow, thank you so much for um, uh, having the confidence that uh, in me of wanting to see me over and over. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this particular uh, episode. And if you have, click like. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and uh, click on that little bell icon and to get um, notification of when new content comes onto the channel. So from Wichita, Kansas, I want to say please enjoy your knitting.